I don't think that you can understand the current situation properly without considering the role that postmodernism plays in this. Because postmodernism, in many ways, especially as it's played out politically, is the new skin that the old Marxism now inhabits. So you could think that there's, there's a postmodern philosophy, which we'll talk about a bit, that really came into its vogue in the 1970s after classic Marxism, especially of the economic type, had been so thoroughly discredited that no one but an absolute reprobate could, 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 uh, could support it publicly anymore. Even the French intellectuals had to admit that communism was a bad deal by the, by the end of the 1960s. And what happened was that they played a sleight of hand game in some sense and rebranded themselves under the postmodern guise. And that's where identity politics came from. And so, and then that spread like wildfire from France, especially into the US, through Yale University, through the English department there, and then everywhere. And, and so, what happened was, you know, there was this idea that the Marxists had put forth that the natural landscape of, economic landscape is a battle. And it's a battle between the proletariat, the working class, and the bourgeois, and that the, that, that economic systems were doomed to continue to enslave people and to keep them poor and downtrodden unless there was a radical economic transformation that was predicated on something more like equity policy. And then that was put in, into place in many, many places, as, as you no doubt know, throughout the 20th century, with absolute, absolutely murderous results. It was the most destructive economic and political doctrine, I think, that has ever been invented by mankind. And that includes National Socialism, because the, the absolute magnitude of the havoc wreaked by the communist systems exceeded that wreaked by Hitler. And, and, and that's, I mean, Hitler didn't have quite as long, as long a time to pull his stunts off quite as effectively, but it was a catastrophic system. And, one of the things that's quite interesting is that the full breadth of that catastrophe has, is not something that students are well taught in our current educational system, which has always made me very suspicious. For example, the students I teach usually know nothing at all about what happened in the Soviet Union under Stalin between, say, 19, Stalin and Lenin between 1919 and 1959. They have no idea that millions, tens of millions of people were killed and far more tortured and, and brutalized by, by that particular regime, to say nothing of Mao. So look, what happened was that by the end of the 1960s, the evidence that communism was a catastrophic failure was so overwhelming that even the French intellectuals, and we'll return to them later, like the, the, because the French have a very uh, long-lasting and powerful public intellectual tradition, and so intellectuals there are very influential. Even the French intellectuals like Sartre, Jean-Paul Sartre, the famous philosopher, had to admit by the end of the 1960s that the, the, the Stalinist, Communist, Maoist experiment, and all of its variants, not just those particular dictators, but all of its variants, was an absolute catastrophic failure. And then what happened was, the postmodernists came onto the scene, and they were all Marxists. But they couldn't be Marxists anymore, because you couldn't be a Marxist and claim that you were a human being by the end of the 1960s. And so they started to play a sleight of hand, and instead of pitting the proletariat, the working class, against the bourgeoisie, they started to pit the oppressor, the oppressed against the oppressor, and that opened up the avenue to identifying any number of groups as oppressed and oppressor, and to continue the same narrative under a different name. It was no longer specifically about economics. It was about power. And everything to the postmodernists is about power. And that's actually why they're so dangerous, because if you're engaged in a discussion with someone who believes in nothing but power, all they are motivated to do is to accrue all the power to them. Because what else is there? There's no logic, there's no investigation, there's no negotiation, there's no dialogue, there's no discussion, there's no meeting of minds and consensus. There's power. And so since the 1970s, under the guise of postmodernism, we've seen the rapid expansion of identity politics throughout the universities. It's, came, it's come to dominate all of the humanities, which are, which are dead, as far as I can tell, and a huge proportion of the social scientists, sciences. And we've been publicly funding extremely radical postmodern leftist thinkers who are hell-bent on demolishing the fundamental 
substructure of Western civilization. And that's no, that's no paranoid delusion. That's, that's, that's their self-admitted goal. And I've identified, not only me, obviously, but one of the main players in this entire drama is a French philosopher named Jacques Derrida, who was, who I think most trenchantly formulated the anti-Western philosophy that is being pursued so assiduously by the radical left. And I think its dangers cannot be, I don't think its dangers can be overstated. And I also don't think the degree to which it's already infiltrated our culture can be overstated. I mean, the, the, the people who hold this doctrine, this radical postmodern communitarian doctrine that, that makes racial identity or sexual identity or gender identity or some kind of group identity paramount, they've got control over most low to mid-level bureaucratic structures. And, and, and many governments as well, but, but even in the United States where, you know, a lot of the governmental institutions have swung back to the Republican side, the postmodernist types have infiltrated bureaucratic organizations at the mid to upper level. And that's actually what they're trained to do by their activist professors in university. And if you want proof of that, you can just go onto the websites of, of women's studies groups, for example, because they're some of the top offenders, and just look at what they say.